All right, so I want to do the full co-sketching algorithm for this polynomial equation over here. I'll start with finding my x and my y intercepts. For my x intercepts, this is in factored form, so I can already tell that my x intercepts are going to be 0 and positive 4. For my y intercept, I will sub in x as 0. 0 times negative 4 cubed is just 0. My y intercept is 0 as well. And there are no asymptotes for this function because it's a regular polynomial function. So now we can start with the first derivative and finding the critical points. We're going to do product rule over here. f equals to x, g equals to 3x minus, oops, x minus 4 to the power of 3. f prime is just 1. g prime is 3x minus 4 square. And then by chain rule, it times by 1, so you don't really need the chain rule here. And now I'll do my product rule. So y prime equals f prime g plus g prime f. Just simplify this a bit. So 1 times x minus 4 cube is just x minus 4 cube. And here I'll just move the x to the front. And now I can simplify this a bit more by factoring out an x minus 4 squared. So here I'm just left with x minus 4, and over here I'm just left with 3x. And I can combine like terms in here. That's just 4x minus 4. So this is my most simplified derived equation. I can make it equal to zero to get my critical points. So here my critical point is going to be four and over here it's going to be four over four, which is one. I'll put these on my number line and Now I'll sub in points into my derived equation to see whether it's going to be increasing or decreasing. I'll start with subbing in zero. If I sub in zero into this equation, I will get positive and a negative, which is just a negative. I know it's decreasing. Sub in two, if I sub in two in this equation, I'll get a positive and a positive, which is positive. I know it's increasing. If I sub in 5 into this equation, I get positive times positive, which is also going to be increasing. So now I know here this is a minimum at 1 comma something else. I can find the y value in a second. And this is going to be a stationary inflection point. Because if it's increasing and increasing or decreasing and decreasing, that's always a stationary inflection point x value is 4, and again, I'll find the two y values of these by subbing these two in my original equation. So for 1, if I sub that in, I will get negative 27, and for 4, if I sub that in, I will get 0. If I want, I can write my intervals of increase and decrease as well. So my intervals of increase are from 1 to 4 and then 4 till infinity and my intervals of decrease are from negative infinity till 1. I can go into my second derivative and to find my inflection points and my intervals of concave up and down. So I'm going to drive this function here again. It's going to be product rule f equals x minus 4 squared, g equals 4x minus 4, f prime is just 2 times x minus 4, and g prime is 
just four. So my second derived equation is going to be F prime G plus G prime F. And again, over here, I can factor out an X minus four. I can also factor out a two if I want to. It's not necessary, uh, but you can do it. So let me take out two X minus four. I'm left with four X minus four plus two X minus four. I'll simplify this over here. That's four X minus four plus two X minus eight. Just six X minus 12. So my inflection points are X equals to four, which I expected because I got that as a stationary inflection point here. And this one is 12 over six, which is just two. I'll put these on my number line to find my intervals of concave up and concave down. So I'll start with picking a value less than two. I'll pick a zero and I'll sub it into my second derived equation over here. And if I do that, I will get negative times negative, which is positive. So this is concave up. And if it's positive, it's concave up. Sub in three, I'll get negative times positive, which is concave down. And then I will sub in five, I'll get positive times positive, which is concave up again. So my inflection points are two. If I sub in two back into my original equation, that one there, I can find my Y value of my inflection point. So if I do that, you get negative 16. And for the second one, which is four, I'll just get zero. I already have that point. Now I can do my intervals of concave up and concave down. So my intervals of concave up are from negative infinity to two and four to positive infinity and concave down is just two to four. And now with all this information, I can do my sketch. I'll start by putting all my points. So my x-intercept and y-intercept are both zero. That's the origin. I know I have an x-intercept at four as well. That's also my critical point and my uh, inflection point. So my stationary inflection point here. I have a minimum at one and negative 27. I have another inflection point at two and negative 16. And then I can just draw it out based on the information. So I know this area is all decreasing and concave down. Basically, it's just going through the origin like that. Oops. I've drawn that a bit better, but you get the idea. It's going through this like that, and then it's going to come back up still concave up all the way till this point here then it becomes a concave down function and this becomes completely flat here because it's a stationary inflection point and then it becomes concave up again this is what the sketch is going to look like and label the points as well and that is the full curve sketching algorithm for this problem